Cheney and Courage inside the Capitol, what should we expect to see? Here now, retired Army intelligence officer Chuck DeVore. So what should we expect, in your opinion? Well, Jesse, you're absolutely right. Uh, Putin underestimated uh, what would be his reception when he set these forces into Ukraine. Uh, President Zelensky did not flee. The Ukrainians did not immediately give up. And he was not able to install a puppet regime very quickly. And as a result, he doesn't have enough troops. Ukraine is now backed by the European Union, by America, by other nations. They've given them essentially an unlimited line of credit. At the same time, they're beginning to shut down the Russian economy. Ukraine has about 7 million people that they can draw upon that are fit for military service. And there's only about 100,000 Russians with another 100,000 behind them, many of them poorly trained conscripts that are coming into the theater of operations. So what may happen, uh, Jesse, is a long stalemate. And the longer it is, the more likely we're going to see collapse of the Russian economy and a lot of pressure on President Putin to get out of office, uh, whether at the point of a gun or some other uh, perhaps more political coup. So we're seeing more brutality because he wasn't able to decapitate the regime during the first week. So what does he do? He just shells cities. He just hits civilian neighborhoods and turns everything into rubble. Is that the move? Is that what we're looking at? Well, that's what many people think will happen. And, and again, I think he's going to underestimate both Ukrainian resolve and world opinion. Now, you mentioned the thermobaric bombs. Uh, there's two different types that we're going to see on the battlefield. One that may have already been used. It's mounted on a tank chassis, and it's used to take out things like bunkers. Uh, and that's a, a more of a tactical battlefield weapon. But there's another weapon that kind of is at the, the line between small nuclear weapons and large conventional weapons. This is the father of all bombs. This uses the thermobaric principles, but if dropped from an airplane, it could destroy an entire city block at a time, killing potentially 10,000 civilians and militia at a shot. Now, if this happens, and if, if video evidence of this gets out to the West, which it will, uh, this is a very dangerous part of escalation that could happen in this conflict that could bring quite a bit more uh, international sanctions against Putin. So if he vaporizes 10,000 people like that with a thermobaric, what does the West do to that? Does that make us escalate? Well, again, at this point, the West is pouring in all kinds of equipment that Ukraine can use. And the issue becomes, how much more could we do short of actually declaring war on Russia? That's why, by the way, this talk about, for example, instituting a no-fly zone over Ukraine is, frankly, dangerous and not something that we can do, because that would essentially be a declaration of war on Russia. And you don't want that. NATO is a defensive alliance. Uh, we need to ensure that NATO remains intact and remains a powerful deterrent against Putin going further, for example, against the Baltic states or Poland. We don't want that. What's important now, Jesse, is that the Ukrainians have the will to fight. They have the ability to fight. And as President Zelensky said when President Biden, I think, very inappropriately offered him evacuation out of Kyiv, he said, I don't need a ride. I need ammunition. We need to give the Ukrainians ammunition. We need to give them armament so that they can fight back and preserve the freedom, uh, preserve the, the, the independence of their nation. And real quick, how are we getting that ammo in that country anyway? We can't fly it in. How does it get there? It, does well, it get through it Poland? Does it get through Romania? And who's doing yes. that? Most of it's coming across the border at Lviv uh, in Poland and, and less so in Romania. Lviv is where you have the, the much greater developed rail network and road network. And that's where most of it's coming in now. And by the way, uh, Ukraine's a big place, right? It's a little bigger than Texas. And so I think it would be very, very hard and difficult for the Russians to completely shut down that transit across the border in Lviv right next to Poland. All right. Thank you so much, Chuck. Thank you.